Warning, the following podcast contains full frontal profanity. This week's episode of The Scathing Atheist is brought to you by Movement, ZipRecruiter, IP Vanish, and by Sydney Powell's new restaurant chain where you never know what you're going to get, but you know it'll be fucking crazy. Kraken Barrel, because seriously, y'all, she's really going to need the money. And now, The Scathing Atheist. This is Dominic DiStefano from the Burnt Church Atheist Podcast. And just in case you were wondering, here's my youngest. We call him Benny Two Cups. It's a fact of fall from Suki Mikey (laughs) Mac. Thursday. It's July 15th. And it's St. Swithin's Day. Yeah, because Groundhog Day doesn't have nearly enough necromancy. Good stuff. <laughs> I've been I've been saying that for years. I'm no illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And from Grover Cleveland's New Jersey, Cincinnati Red State, and Redtown Blue State, this is The Skating Atheist. On this week's episode, CPAC reminds us just how secure our jobs are. <laughs> right? Bible study is... Literally synonymous with domestic terrorism this week. It is. And Tom and Cecil will be here with more kinds of dissonance than they give themselves credit for. But first, the diatribe. I noticed a pair of remarkable op-eds this week, one in the New York Times and the other in the Washington Post, and they weren't remarkable so much for what they said as where they said it. The WAPO one was titled, Why are white evangelicals embracing an anti-democratic movement? Because they're panicking. Uh, The other was a little more direct. It was called, The Christian Right is in Decline and it's Taking America with It. So both of them were written in response to a new survey from the Public Religion Research Institute called the 2020 Census of American Religion. And like pretty much all national surveys about religion in the past decade or two, it wasn't great news for the Christian right. Among its most significant findings was that evangelicals are now outnumbered by white mainline Protestants. In fact, the number of evangelicals has been plummeting. They they peaked back in 2006 when they represented 23% of the population, and now they represent about 14.5%. That's a loss of over 25 million people. Now, of course, running away from them doesn't necessarily mean running towards us. While nuns remain the largest religious demographic on the survey, those 25 million plus fleeing the evangelical churches are mostly pushing their chips over to the other side of the table rather than cashing out. They're joining mainline Protestant churches, which in demographic parlance basically means they're just going to less politically active congregations. And of course, in most ways, that's a good thing. It means that the assholes screaming about how gay rights are a violation of their religious freedom are losing clout. It means that appealing to voters' Christian prejudices is getting to be a less viable national strategy for politicians. And it means that the long-term trends are all in our favor. But it's not all good news, right? Because they're looking at the same numbers we are. The fact that so many people are going to so much trouble to enshrine stuff like I can still hate gay people if Jesus says so into law is precisely because they know they're on their way out of the inner circle. There was never a need to write this shit down in law books as long as it looked like they were always going to have a comfortable supermajority. But ever since the largest religious demographic shifted to doesn't give a shit, they've been in a desperate race to try to codify their bigotry while they still can The problem, of course, is that as good as the secular world was doing, we reached a certain point where we said, ah, finally, we've got this dangerous animal cornered. There's nowhere it can escape to now. So who's up for some lunch? In the wake of the religious terrorism that rung in the new millennium, we actually went on the war path a bit. You know, not just the atheist movement, but kind of everybody. We fought back against the dangers of religious extremism. But as soon as we got the beast cornered, we started arguing about what to do next. Some people thought it might be best to just, you know, tidy up that corner so our prey could live out their life comfortably there. Others figured maybe we should also trap ourselves in a corner so that it would be fair. But most people just threw their hands up in celebration and screamed, hooray, we did it. And then they went home. 
After all, some of the people they'd been on the hunt with were a bunch of assholes, and they didn't want to associate with them any longer than they had to. In fact, so many people turned their backs on the hunt that when the beast started to fight its way out, most of them didn't even notice until it had elected a fucking president. And that's how we wound up here, a spot where evangelicals' power is on the rise at the same time that their numbers are on the wane. Look, you and I are fighting for a lot of good shit. We're fighting for reason and logic. We're fighting for education and science. We're fighting for civil rights and the best possible future for our children. But as noble as all of that is, it's never going to motivate us like fighting for God. Right? The, the, the best we can ever fight for is something that actually exists. But they can imagine shit far grander than reality so they can fight for things like eternity and the salvation of human souls. And sure, for a lot of them, that's all just bullshit to try to sell more heaven tickets. But for some of them, it's real. And that means when their loss looks inevitable, they can be more desperate than you and I could ever be. After all, we're talking about people who resorted to terrorism even when they were in power. And if they're not afraid to break this country when it's theirs, just imagine what they'll be willing to do when it isn't. They're talking about your Jesus. We interrupt this broadcast bring you a special news bulletin. Joining me for headlines tonight are the fire flower and tanuki suit to my one-up mushroom, Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick. Fellas, <laughs> are you ready to empower? You know what? I'm actually a penguin suit guy. Really? <laughs> Fucking ice yeah. levels suck. You can slide. Ah, I would have said cat suit, so there you go. Yeah. By the way, if you Google tanuki suit, make sure you do it with safe search on, people. Very <laughs> important that you do it with safe search on. Disagree. Or just don't have Eli's search history. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, while we sort that out, we're going to take a quick break for a word from this week's first sponsor, Movement. Hey, welcome to typical watch buying experience. Let me shake your hand way too hard. I'm Bryce with a J. Ow, ow. Okay, yeah, hi. Um, So I'm looking for a watch. Uh, you know, something I can wear every day or something to class up an outfit a little bit. I heard absolutely nothing you just said, but feast your eyes on this. It's the ZX4000. They call it that because it's $5,000. Sorry, they call it the, the ZX4000. Ooh, or maybe because, you'd prefer this. Yeah, okay. yeah, maybe you're a slick Taroon kind of guy. The back is so sharp, it will literally harm you. What? Why would anybody want that? $9,000. Okay, I feel like you're not listening. I just want a nice, classy watch that doesn't break the bank. Oh, then you want movement watches. Oh, what are movement watches? Movement watches have the look and quality of a $400 to $500 watch you're paying for at a department store, but cost a fraction of the price because they were built online and own their process from start to finish. Okay, that sounds great, but are they actually nice? You're darn tootin' they are. Movement let us try oh, one out, and it's literally the know. most compliments I've ever gotten on a piece of clothing. They really are classic, good-looking watches at a fraction of what you'd pay at a department store. Plus, you don't have to deal with this guy. Do you want to hear a sexist joke? I have sexist nope, jokes. No, no, I do not. And now, movement's expanded into blue light glasses that protect your eyes from screens, minimalist jewelry, and more style essentials that don't break the bank. All designed out of their California headquarters. That sounds pretty great. So, where do I sign up? If you want to elevate your look with style that doesn't break the bank, then join the movement and get 15% off today with free shipping and free returns by going to mvmt.com slash scathing. Again, that's mvmt.com slash scathing. All right. I guess I'm done here with you. But Noah, question. If you already have a movement watch, what are you doing here? Oh, uh, uh, Bryce and I fight in the parking lot every day at three. You know we do. Yeah, cool. That's nice for you guys. And now back to the headlines. In our lead story tonight, there might finally be evidence of a link between Christianity and violence. Weird. Ooh. Yeah. And also a link to crazy idiots carrying out domestic terrorism because of a thoroughly debunked conspiracy theory. But enough about the general history of Christianity. Yeah, that's all we have of a it. story <laughs> from this week about the Capitol riot <laughs> and the crazy idiots who carried out domestic terrorism because of a thoroughly debunked conspiracy theory. And just about all of them just happen to be Christian. Coincidence. Hmm. More specifically, we learned last week that one particular terrorist cell was using Bible study as a cover for their treason and guns club that was part of the rioting on January 6th. I mean, 
depending on the chapter and verse, trying to overthrow the government could very well count as Bible study. Yeah, Keith. I don't know that we can right, like sure. render unto Caesar that which is in a can of whoop ass. I remember that verse. Yeah, yeah no, so. that's right? in uh, Ephesians. So we heard about this during the criminal trial of one of the Capitol rioters who has a name. I forgot the name. Uh, we're going to call him Mr. Go Fuck Yourself. It was something very similar to that. <laughs> so apparently Mr. Go Fuck Yourself was leading a militia group and they were calling it Bible study. According to court documents, they mostly focused on firearms training and stuff related to that that I am certain uh, they referred to as tactical maneuvers while they were doing it. <laughs> uh, mostly like hand signals they saw in a movie about Navy SEALs and that serpentine running yeah, thing. Yeah, a lot of sure. aborted dive roll attempts, I would imagine. You know, they got it. No, no. <laughs> yeah, so... When Mr. Go Fuck Yourself was in Washington in January, he made friends with a fellow domestic terrorist. Spoiler, it's an undercover cop. Sure the fuck was. <laughs> and the cop was like, hey, fellow treason enthusiast, we are the same age. Are you part of a treason club? Tell me all about it. Just uh, right into my chest area. The, yeah. the carnation. <laughs> mm -hmm. Tell me all about that. And Mr. Go Fuck Yourself said, yeah, well, great question about the treason club. I actually have a, literal words, cloak and dagger group created to build resistances for what will inevitably come. Huh. And Go Fuck Yourself invited his very normal new friend to their meetings. That's where Go Fuck Yourself told his members to, quote, keep your guns and be ready to use them. <laughs> Go Fuck Yourself also mentioned... The manifesto he was working on, he used the word manifesto and he said, quote, if I get into a gunfight with the feds and I don't make it, I want to be able to transfer as much wisdom to my son as possible. Do you have, uh, do you have a I mean, straw? <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, watching your head explode from a sniper's bullet is going to teach you plenty, <laughs> Mr. Go fuck yourself. A thousand words. That's just me. <laughs> okay, so how do you get to the point? Where you like you realize the thing you're writing is a manifesto, but you don't realize you're the bad guy. <laughs> right? It's a simple flow chart. Like, am I writing a manifesto? Am I Karl Marx? Then I'm the fucking bad, bad guy. guy. Yep. That's yep. that's the rule. Everybody knows that's the rule. So <laughs> the good news is we caught this guy. But the bad news, people just like him absolutely get extra cover from having any kind of Christian title for their group. Yep. Cops weren't willing to enforce laws about no plaguing during a global pandemic yep. when the offender was a church. Somehow, I get the feeling that Christian gunfighting Bible study might get some extra leeway, too, sometimes. Bottom line, if you have a Christian title for your thing, that should be extra suspect, not the opposite, because data. Yeah. Yeah, and by the way, I also feel like it's bad news that all it takes to find a terrorist cell is walk around a Trump rally going, hey, any guys got a terrorist cell I could join? <laughs> you know, trying to buy mushrooms in a fucking dead show? Hey, psst, psst, terrorists? <laughs> and in Cthorn and my side news. Nice. It's CPAC week. And while for most of the country, that means a startlingly horrifying reminder of just how much money and personal investment there is in being evil, here at The Scathing Atheist, it means a cornucopia of material to talk to you about. Basically, every right-wing asshole on our show gets on a stage a couple times a year and competes to make it on the podcast like Un-American Idol. Mm -hmm. And, of course, our first golden ticket winner this week was GOP representative and the worst thing on wheels since the Chevrolet Corvair, okay. Madison Cawthorn, who claims... No, I was a big fan of the Corvair, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only option. Who claimed that President Joe Biden's vaccination efforts were part of a plot to eventually steal people's guns and Bibles. All right, guys, working backwards, we have... Steal all guns and Bibles, and uh, then, you know, going to the left, we have start a global pandemic. So we just need to connect these dots somehow. <laughs> yeah. They think that was the meeting. Yep. They think that was the plan. Mm -hmm. All I'm saying is if we're coming for their guns and Bibles, we must be coming the long way round, right? <laughs> like fucking Moses is 40 years of walking to get 500 miles to Canaan, got nothing on us. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> it's a very convoluted plan. So a little background on this. The vast majority of folks who aren't vaccinated at this point in the United States are, well, they're children yeah. who can't get the vaccine yet. But the folks who can get the vaccine but haven't are actually still largely made up of folks who can't take the time off work or are homebound and can't get to a max vaccination site. So door-to-door distribution of vaccines, especially to that latter group, is vital because a lot of them are older, but many of them just like don't have a car or can't afford public transportation to a vaccine or clinic. live in a place. There is no public transportation. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Which is most places. Yeah. yeah. Almost all the places. So point is, there are lots of good reasons for this new door to door initiative to get people their shots. And literally only someone truly as evil as Madison Cawthorn could oppose. Yeah. It. So of course he did in an interview with, I don't know. I could have looked it up, but it's some white asshole saying, who cares? Who cares? <laughs> asshole McAsshole face from Christian University. Cawthorn said, quote, the thing about the mechanisms that they would have to build to be able to actually execute that massive of a thing. And then think about what those mechanisms could be. Nope. And he then constructed that sentence really badly. <laughs> yeah. And then think about what those mechanisms could be used for. They can work. go door to door to take your guns. They can then go door to door to take your Bibles and yeah. very well, laborious quote. That's actually true about the big mechanism. Joe Biden invented doors and other doors. Yeah, we, I, yeah. <laughs> the we already have. So I look, dude, I could use you to stop up a toilet, Madison. That's not what makes you a piece of shit, though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so this is obviously bullshit, dangerous, lying bullshit, which will kill people and contributes to the extension of a plague, which we could have beaten a year ago. But more importantly, it leaves me, Eli Bosnick, with a terrible dilemma. See, I want to be a good ally to disabled folks, but so exactly whatever's about to happen. Okay. I also really want to tip over Madison no. Cawthorn. Yep, there it is, boo. So bad. It's my dream. It's the center of my vision board. No. Stepping away from so my microphone. So what I am asking you, Physical podcast distance, listener, if you myself. are a wheelchair user, please give me your blessing to push over that Madison Cawthorn. That wouldn't matter. Why would they be able we to do, do it that? together? If, if they did um, it, it would be fine. Hands and knees behind the pool situation. I'll kneel. You, you why would you need? We'll workshop it. Kneel. I'm just saying. I need this. Get at me on <laughs> Twitter. Jesus Christ. I don't think you can trip a wheel the way you're describing. No, there's, it certainly would not help that you were kneeling behind it. Yeah. Can't find out if you don't try. And yes, you can. You can just sure can. Thought experiment. And in Willing and Babel news tonight, <laughs> as if showing the world how far from seaworthy or buildable Noah's Ark was didn't do enough to dissuade people from biblical literalism, Ken Ham has another idea up his sleeve. On the fifth anniversary of his stupid-ass park's opening last week, Ham announced that within a few years, he'd be opening up a full-sized replica of the Tower of Babel. This is so stupid. Because that worked out <laughs> so well last time, I guess. But I guess perhaps reasoning that he's immune to the punishment since the shit he says already doesn't make any sense. Ham is going to push forward, apparently. Okay. I guess that tracks. Yeah, and he's got safety checks in place. You just build till the workers start randomly speaking Chinese and then you knock a few blocks off the top yeah. and you stop there. That's the building. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hot take. Ken Ham doesn't read. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think he's an, an illiterate person that would just explain doesn't know how to read. A yeah. lot. Right? Yeah. So according to his recent announcement, it'll take about three years to research, plan, and build his Tower of Babel attraction. But perhaps even sillier than his belief that this would actually be a replica of something that existed in history is his belief that the new attraction will, quote, tackle the racism issue, end quote. What? Okay. Yeah, because, uh, you know, if anybody's ever going to crack that racism nut, it's probably going to be a white evangelical capitalist in Kentucky. Yeah, they're nailing it. <laughs> Okay, maybe what he means is that once we all learn that God created Latin verb conjugation to spite us, we'll join together and overthrow him once that and for all. That would make okay. okay. All right, I can okay. see the path there. But that whole Bible story is about God creating more ethnicities, right? Mm -hmm. So Ken Ham's thinking to himself, like, all right, we do it again. Maybe God does the opposite, and then so, like, no more race theory, <laughs> and then I fixed it. Yeah, no, it's like fixing amnesia in a cartoon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
Now, we should be clear here. This is not the first time Ken Ham has announced that he was going to build his own Tower of Babel. And given what we know from his public filings, there's no fucking way the park is so flush with cash that it's going to be breaking the ground on new shit anytime soon. <laughs> so to a certain degree, this is a he's going to redo the whole park in levels kind of an announcement. But after a dozen years of making fun <laughs> of how he was never going to get a stupid arc built, I'm not writing him off just yet. So yeah, might have more stories on this in the future. And next up in headlines, we have a follow-up story about Christian healthcare. Still a scam, turns yep. out. Still a scam. Mm -hmm. Same for all the stuff that starts with Christian that yep. I've ever mm -hmm. checked. Yep. Mm -hmm. And we got a new example this week. Christian banks. What? So, yeah. You know how banks are great, but they're always killing babies? Killing babies, yeah. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, somebody fixed it. <laughs> Apparently, an evangelical minister got tired of his... Secular bank and <laughs> how they hold all the money non Christianly. So he started up a Christian bank. It's called <laughs> Pro Life Bank. <laughs> One word. Yeah. And they are getting my sperm donation whether they want it or not. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> We're taking the owning out of loaning. You guys, you, guys, you can keep that if you want it. <laughs> it's fantastic. Okay. So the plucky new entrepreneur who is disrupting the world of atheist banking <laughs> is Nick Vujicic. In case anyone's not familiar, he runs the anti-choice ministry called Life Without Limbs, <laughs> which I initially thought was a very aggressive title about an early stage fetus. <laughs> it's not. It's not that. It's actually about Vujicic being born without arms and legs. So, okay. So, Eli, no jokes about tipping him over, okay? Yeah, can we just skip Why those? I, no jokes about words. You guys, I didn't remember your thing. We're just going to push right past it. I'm going to say, you know, good work overcoming that adversity. But everything else about you is fucking terrible. That being said, he does have some evidence for God. But when he was staying at a hotel in San Francisco, a team of demons walked right into his room. Huh. Are, are you curious about the dimensions? Yes, of the I was wondering. I about am, the, yeah. the demons were ten feet tall and five feet wide. So, God is real. I'm starting a bank. Give me all your money. Well, right, so, yeah, okay. no, it's, that was the end of the story. Be perfect at banking because he's familiar with um, re repossession. I don't. I just. I don't get the connection <laughs> there. Then. Yeah. So, besides the fact that somewhat large demons attacked him in San Francisco, sheetrock, yeah, and, and of course all the banks killing babies. Aside from that, Vujicic has one other big reason for starting his Christian bank. Ooh, ooh, is it, is it persecution? It's perse yep. It's persecution. <laughs> <laughs> he claims that his atheist bank kicked him out for no reason. <laughs> they froze all his accounts what? and they sent him a really mean letter explaining how he sucks as a person so the bank doesn't want his business anymore. And you got completely frozen out. I bet that's the whole story moving on. <laughs> sure is. <laughs> Who is this wonderful bank and how do I open an account with them? <laughs> yeah, I really want to know now. So apparently, Nikki Vuj analyzed the banking sector and found out that everyone is giving money to kill babies in that entire sector. Huh. So he decided to finally get some Christian people into the American banking game. And just like any good businessman... He found a slice of the economy that was not being served. According to the website for the new bank, they did three entire weeks of research on this. Whole thing. And they found wow. exactly zero banks that were forcing people to give birth against their will. So there you go. Niche discovered. Nice. Mm, I don't know, guys. I've met the founder and it seems like this business might cost you an arm and a oh, leg. Ah, mm, boo. Ah. And if you're feeling a little down and you want a quick laugh, you definitely need to check out their website. It's ridiculous. The top of the landing page for ProLifeBank.com says, Noah built an ark to save lives. We're building a bank to do the same. And the rest is basically Tinder bios for Nick and his partner, Betsy. <laughs> it, it's not at all clear that they understand even like the general concept of what a bank does <laughs> in no, real reality. No, no, no. It's like that novel you've been working on was a financial institution. <laughs> that wants to take all your money. It's not looking good. Yeah, Christians, put your money there. 
<laughs> the guy whose accounts all got frozen. <laughs> <laughs> And finally tonight, in Hail Mary full of critical race news, nice. there are lots of reasons to send your children to a private Catholic school. Smaller class sizes on average, better funding for extracurricular activities, or, you know, legally enshrined bigotry. There you go. Well, that last one was mostly the reason that Anthony and Barbara Scarpo sent their kids to the Academy of the Holy Names in Tampa, Florida. An academy they are now suing for their money and donations back for being, I shit you not, too woke. <laughs> Jesus Christ. My clients demand legal recourse. Give them their money back or say the N-word right now. I'm a lawyer <laughs> oh, no. in Florida. This is my real job today. I really, this is me at my job. A lawyer in Florida. Like, I, I feel like. You know, in the Florida bar probably has a question where you have to draw lines from the slur word to the correct picture, though. You know? <laughs> it's a lot like a Denny's place. Yeah, you become part of yeah. the Florida bar. You got to color in a frame from. Birth I'm of sure a you're not the first person to compare the Florida bar to a Denny's place. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the story. Anthony and Barbara, or Banthony, if you will, originally <laughs> pledged $1.35 million to the school, but they have since withdrawn their pledge and are demanding a full refund of their tuition because, quote, the Academy, in actuality, failed to provide any semblance of a Catholic education conforming to mainstream Catholicism or the Catholic Catechism, and instead insidiously indoctrinated its students, requiring that they, quote, check their white privilege, end quote, and feel sufficiently guilty merely because of the color of their skin and because their parents could afford their attendance at the Academy and the one point three five million dollar to a Jesus. Christ. Seriously, that that was a real quote. The complaint also specifically mentions that the school condemned the bigotry reflected in the deaths of Ahmad Arbery, George Floyd, and Breonna Taylor. That was in the complaint. There was, that was the complaint. Jesus they did that. Christ. <laughs> Also, white people should feel guilty. We're the fucking worst. Yeah, <laughs> so, if you don't feel guilt, that's you're you're like crazy. You're doing that's it wrong. wrong yeah. You. Okay, but if all these guys have to prove is that mainstream Catholicism is racist, this seems like a slam dunk, right? Like they <laughs> they've already won. <laughs> but that's not all. You see, the academy also acknowledged the existence of gay people. Quote. Oh, shit. Contrary to its advertising as being a Catholic school, Defendant Academy avoided and continues to avoid all mention of mainstream Catholicism or the accepted Catholic you catechism. Hear it? All of it? They didn't hear it. They're going to keep For going, example, yep, on a blackboard at the entrance to the school where all ages pass, Defendant Academy explains how to be a good ally to LGBTQ plus individuals. <gasps> Persecution. But utterly fails to put any part of this explanation into perspective with mainstream Catholicism or the Catholic Catechism. Okay. End quote. It is literally what I said as a joke before, but with a yep. different slur word. It's exactly <laughs> yes. the same. Oh, well, come on, Heath. I'm pretty sure they would have accepted any slur word. I'm just yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. But okay. most of them, yeah. Here's my favorite part. Here's my favorite part. In addition to asking for a refund, the lawsuit demands that the school, quote, be stopped from advertising itself as a Catholic institution and for the Florida Catholic Conference to stop accrediting the school. The lawsuit, quote. The, the, the courts can do that, huh? Okay, or, or, or at least threaten to not give it communion. That's the Catholic thing yeah, to do, right? Sorry, it's, it's a false advertising claim yeah. because of not enough bigotry. Yep. That's literally what just happened. I, feel like I dug up the back of the basketball courts. There were no indigenous oh, babies Jesus back there. Christ. Zero. <laughs> None. Show me a dead indigenous baby or say the N-word or give me $1.35 million. <laughs> It's my job today. So weird day. Yeah. This lawsuit is almost certain to fail. And the school has already indicated that they intend to counter sue for the money that Banthony pledged. And look, I don't like to take the side of a Catholic institution ever. Right. But don't have a but. But Academy of Super Special Names or whatever the fuck you're called. If you're listening, and we know you are, huge fans of the pod, if you win this lawsuit, 
you 100% need to create a gay scholarship named after these people. <laughs> the I, I will become, yes, I will become as Catholic as Joe Biden. Do you hear me? Okay. Holy <laughs> names? This is your chance to win one. All right. And while Eli explores yet another option of how to devour man flesh in front of a church full of people, I suppose we can close the headlines for the night. Heath, Eli, thanks as always. Jumanji. And when we come back, Tom and Cecil will be here to help us form Insult Voltron. The following is a reenactment of Eli Bosnick's actual hiring experience the week before last. Listener discretion is advised. Well, hello, old boss from the toy company. How are you? What's that? You're trapped in England and need to hire people for a new location in New Jersey. Well, sure, I'd be happy to help. Hmm, you know, I've been advertising with ZipRecruiter for years. Maybe I should actually try them out and see how the service works. But you know what? I'll post on those other sites I used to use when I was hiring just to be on the safe side. Well, hello there, theater job website. What have you got for me? I found over a hundred responses. Wow, that's great. Wait, mo most of these people think they're applying for an acting job. Yes, yes, I guess people just go down me applying to everything. Oh, that's that's really useless. Um, uh, w What about you, website that's probably too old for anyone normal to be using it anymore? I will give you eight million dollars for your checking account number. Yep, no, you, you used to be like that, and you are still like that. Okay, well, how about you, ZipRecruiter? Oh, yeah, uh, here you go. Wow, it's a dozen qualified candidates who actually know what job they're applying for and seem like a good fit. How did you do this, ZipRecruiter? Well, when you post a job on ZipRecruiter, it gets sent out to over 100 top job sites with one click. Then... ZipRecruiter's matching technology finds people with the right skills and experience for your job and actively invites them to apply. In fact, ZipRecruiter is so effective that four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Wow, you really did. Like, it's not just ad copy. You actually got me qualified candidates within the first day like you say you do. Yeah, I did. I did exactly what I say I do. Huh. So while other companies overwhelm you with way too many options or whatever... It was that old website presented me with. ZipRecruiter finds you what you're looking for. The needle in the haystack. And right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free at this web address. ZipRecruiter.com slash scathing. Once again, remember to go to this unique place. ZipRecruiter.com slash S-C-A-T-H-I-N-G. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Would you like to read another very, very sad cover letter? No, I would not, Theater Jobs website. I would not like that. And we're back and we're excited to bring you what we're pretty sure is the anti-penultimate, maybe even pen oh, penultimate man. edition a word? of the years, <sighs> uh, the year before last, Vulgarity <laughs> for Charity <laughs> year before last. on scathing. That's just, we're not counting <laughs> the couple Christ. of segments we still have left to do on cognitive oh, business. And speaking of which, let's uh, welcome our partners in at least this particular crime. Tom Cecil, <laughs> welcome back, guys. Hey, Noah, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, it might even be several. Yeah, no, it's an We're Iron still Man. We're insulting people from the before time. <laughs> yep. <That's> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's some of them like, and they're weird because now there's been a pandemic. Yeah. 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 This is insults from the preface to the road. That's yeah. what it's happening right now. <laughs> All right. So, Heath, how about you start us off? Jared would like a roast of Merck's Law. Okay, that's a pretty good pick. So Merck's law is the assumption that only Democrats have agency or influence over American politics. Sounds super dumb. Literally yeah. impossible even. <laughs> but somehow, way too many people make arguments that contain it. It usually sounds something like this. So Democrats tried to pass that voting rights bill as a bluff, and they secretly knew it wouldn't work. And that's how we know that Joe Biden is actually a Republican in disguise. <laughs> In which case, he has no agency. My whole thing fell apart. I'm stupid. So that's what it usually looks like. One other example. I voted for Jill Stein in the general in 2016. <laughs> <laughs> Idiots. That's another great example. Fuck the Supreme Court forever. It, yep. You have to think about that. That's you. That's your fault. Yep. 
All right, so Cecil Hein Peter would like a roast of his partner, Laura. Okay, wait. So you're from Amsterdam and they're from California? When you met Laura, were they panhandling with devil sticks at the Beck show when he was still on tour? <laughs> right? <laughs> Didn't your mother tell you not to date people from shithole countries, man? <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Laura looks like she had to quickly find a costume for a Halloween party and the only store that was open was Hot Topic. <laughs> <laughs> Noah, <laughs> Noah, this one's back to you. William wants you to rip into his uncle Richard. Oh, God. That, okay, so this motherfucker runs a mission for the needy that he uses to shelter his slumlord money. Oh, no. Right? Like, like he, has a, he had a business, had a business what? running Section 8 housing until HUD pulled funding because what? he had too many rats and snakes oh. in both his tenements and his fucking soul. <laughs> <laughs> also, also, he looks like Mike Lindell went as Roger Ebert for Halloween. It's kind of a weird <laughs> yeah. visual. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Tom, you're up next. Nicholas would like you to roast his ex-boyfriend, Josh. All right, Josh was an abuser and a manipulator. But you know what the most important part of that sentence is, Nicholas? Was. Because to you, for whatever else he is, Josh is also past tense. And while there's nothing that fixes the past, Nicholas, there's also almost certainly nothing that fixes Josh. And as the world moves steadily forward and more and more of us learn to spot the red flags and signs of abusers and clumsy manipulators like Josh... They will find themselves more and more unable to ply their trade and lacking the skills to really connect. Josh will become more and more isolated. And you, Nicholas, you will look up one day and smile when you realize you forgot his fucking name. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't it be fucked up if he did already and it's just it took us two years to get to <laughs> right, it? Now, just now he brought it back. back. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, isn't that yours? Oh, oh yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. So, Eli, uh, you're going to close out round one. Jimmy would like a roast of his coworker, Michael. Jimmy. Jimmy, when you said in your note that Michael had a dumb face, you were not kidding. Jimmy, I specialize in stupid faces. I look at Greg Locke's face on a regular basis, mm -hmm. but Michael, Michael takes the fucking cake. He looks like he's reading the instructions on how to shit that he's taped to the side of his bathroom wall. <laughs> he looks like if Thanos hadn't gone after all the Infinity Stones because he couldn't count that high. That's what Michael looks like. <laughs> First, he wrote it on the toilet paper, and then he was like, oh, okay, oh, I see what happens. Oh. Post it. I got to read it before I throw it in next time. Okay. <laughs> All right, time for round two. This category is people who, Heath, you're up first. Cindy would like a roast of people who blow off fireworks and not on the 4th of July. Okay. Well, here's my hot take on this. Maybe instead of getting a bunch of kids together and exploding bombs, we do... Literally anything else. Pretty much anything. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm saying it's dumb on the 4th of July, too. Seems like a good plan for all the days with numbers to not get kids together and explode bombs. Uh, also, <laughs> people who do that, dogs hate you and I hope you die. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. When the god of thunder attacks their entire universe with a hail of gunfire, dogs don't really care about tax evaders having a big day 245 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you. And Cecil... Danny wants you to shit on people who are assholes on public transportation. Oh, what the fuck? You fucking fuckhead that has to have a bag and a perfectly made seat for a human. You don't have to mark your territory like a dog. This isn't a fiefdom. You don't have to claim the seat next to you like Columbus collecting islands on a Caribbean <laughs> tour. <laughs> just, I'll just stand here like the rest of the people in this human Play-Doh fun factory while you spread out and open air your nuts. <laughs> fuckhead. <laughs> Okay, Noah, you're up. Lindsay wants a roast of every dickhole who has a bias against black cats. And this roast is also for me. Good pick, Lindsay. This one's good. Right? Well, okay, first of all, if there's any kind of cat that you don't like, fuck you. Okay, just fuck <laughs> you. I'm still kind of pissed at that lady in Atlanta for calling animal control about the ocelot or whatever that crawled into bed with her instead of just spooning with him and giving him fucking belly rubs. God damn it. Anyway. Fuck you and your bullshit superstitious cat racism. You 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 afraid they're gonna put a curse on you? What would be worse than being so stupid you think cats can put curses on people? You think you wouldn't be better off as a newt? You're smart for a newt, right? You probably are above average for a newt. Not doing so well as a human. All right, Tom, I got one for you. All right. Daniel wants you to make some people cry because they deserve it. The target is, and keep in mind that this was requested way pre-pandemic. People who are anti-vax and anti-flu shot. Okay. Topical. 
Uh, anti-vax and anti-flu shot. Okay, let's see. Hey, assholes, here's something that isn't hyperbole, but is a perfect actual truth. Somewhere, someone's loved one was turned over onto their stomach, drowning from their own lungs and dying alone while their family wept and mourned from a distance. Their hands clasped together because they couldn't be there to hold the hands of their dying loved one. And that is your fault. That is personally your fault. That death and more. That pain, that agony, that weeping, that is all on you. Because even if you never got anyone sick, your stubborn denial to accept reality and science and facts gives cover for the next guy who did get sick and who spread that shit. And let's be clear, no one needed to catch it. And my sincere and honest and truest hope is not that you get sick, but that someone you love, the person you cherish the very most, I hope that they fucking get sick. I want that person to get sick, too, to be clear. Yeah. Thomas being <laughs> well, but second, it, the order matters. Yeah. Any order for me, really. <laughs> and I hope with all of my fucking heart that you have to FaceTime them as they die alone. And when you watch them slip away in pain and agony and loneliness, I hope you know that it's your fucking fault. And I hope you never forgive yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tom is hoping for the death of the loved ones of his uh, <laughs> his roasties again. Three votes, three. Votes. Yeah, no, no, that's, 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 that's fair. It's fair. I'm, I'm there. Um, Unanimous. So, Eli Duck's proxy wants some hate for people who piss on the toilet seat in the what? men's room. You know what, ducks? I bet your penis works great every single time, doesn't it, Doug? <laughs> <laughs> What are you, 20, 25, <laughs> Australian? Oh, sure. Every P is just a spear that flies forth perfectly, hitting whatever target you choose. Well, some of us aren't that lucky, ducks. <laughs> some of us have noticed, I'm going to say it, a leak or two in the hose over the past couple of years. The spiral seems to have uncoiled a bit, ducks. Sure. Spiral? You want to clean it up, but who's to say who's pissed? Also on the spiral. Seat. Right I, I sprinkle a bit and all of a sudden I'm the fucking janitor, ducks. No, ducks. You. You check your penis working privilege, my friend. <laughs> But those guys who smear shit on the walls, they they can fuck themselves. Dude, they are, uh, I don't know. Lift, that's weird. Lift the thing. Any, anyway, okay. I'm sorry, Eli, is it like a phone cord? What are you describing? <laughs> I, like a pig's tail. <laughs> I'm convinced every man. So you know how your pee is a oh, spiral? Oh, no. Why did you ask nope. this? Sorry, my urine is lamellar flow. It just comes out perfectly straight every time. I'm tired of finding out weird stuff about my dick. I'm 33. <laughs> They promised it would stop someday. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we've still got some roast to do before we wrap them up. We're going to take one last break from a word for our, our final sponsor this week. IP vanish. Okay. And then Tuesday for scathing. Yep. That works for me. Oh, that actually doesn't work for me. I have a doctor's appointment. No, no, you don't. What? Yep. Yes, I do. I have. No. A, I have. No, you're, you're meeting up with Mike from eBay to get those body pillows you ordered. God, what? I, I was I was tired of you guys always making up excuses for missing our records, so I hacked your computers. Dude, seriously? Not cool, Noah. Well, I'm sorry, but if you wanted to keep your information safe, you should have been using IP Vanish. Oh, what's a body pillow? Nope. Nope, not what the ad is for. No. Um Are you sure? I am very sure, yes. Uh, okay. Okay. What's IP Vanish? IP Vanish is a virtual private network, a VPN for short. A VPN is a super important tool that helps you safely browse the internet. You can use a VPN on your computers, tablets, phones, even things like your Fire Stick when you're streaming media. And when you use a VPN, all your data is encrypted. So, Heath, I wouldn't know that you've been taking Mario Kart lessons for the last four months in a desperate hope what? of beating uh, a child. Is it, It's a child who cheats. It's a cheating child. They're but cheating. But at $100 an hour, Heath, really? Victory at any cost. Okay, well, luckily for you and listeners of the show, IP Vanish is offering an incredible 65% off, just $349 for the first month or $31.49 for the year. So, Eli, you could even afford it with your crippling gambling addiction. It's not gambling. It's pachinko. It's a Japanese thing. You wouldn't understand it. It's okay, not... it's still 
Okay, but just go to ipvanish.com slash scathing and claim your 65% savings. They have plans that start at just $349 or $3149 a year. This is the time to sign up. With our discount and their current promotional offering, you can get a VPN for 65% off their usual offering. IP Vanish is the best of the best, even rated 4.7 out of 5 on Trustpilot, and that's with over 6,000 reviews. Show these guys some love. They're repeat sponsors. Remember, it's ipvanish.com slash scathing to get the deal and start protecting yourself online. Well, I'm definitely in. All right. So, uh, Gam record on Friday? Oh, Friday? Uh, I can't. I have a, um, I'm, uh, I'm spying on a child's Mario Kart strats. Saturday it is then. I can do Saturday. They're really good. <laughs> okay. Still rolling with people who Heath, you're up next. Lauren wants a roast of people who are white boomers claiming to be priests of African religions. Uh, <laughs> okay. How niche yeah. is this for So <laughs> boomers who do that, bring it in. You know how the president of Zimbabwe is not the British Museum? <laughs> it's like that. Stop it. Stop doing what you're doing. And before you even say it, I know... You voted for Obama and you own a djembe. Don't tell me that. Still no. Still stop what you're doing. Oh, and now you want to name your, your black friend? You want to name your Okay, yeah. Three, two. Not much time left. Don't say dashiki. Dashiki! Uh, you said dashiki. Yeah. No. Nope. <laughs> That's a shirt. Obviously All right. said hats. <laughs> Cecil, <laughs> Sharon wants you to roast people who drive four-wheel drive in the snow too fast. <laughs> Okay, schmuck. I realize your Infinity F35 has all-wheel drive, <laughs> but you have no idea how to pilot that thing in the best of conditions. <laughs> what makes you think you're capable of slaloming that thing through rush hour traffic? Traction to move forward does nothing to help you stop. You're about to play <laughs> Newton's Cradle with your baby on board, fuckhead. You gotta accelerate into the yeah. skin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Turn real hard. Yeah. Okay, Noah, back to you. Roger wants a roast for people who think the war on Christmas is real. Oh, I just, I, it's one of the delights of being atheists, right? You occasionally, you're just out like, you know, walking your dog or whatever. You look over and there's some out of breath Christian and you're going like, oh shit, was I winning a race against you? I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't even, no, you were there. But here's the thing. So what if it is real? Right, your guy is the creator of the goddamn universe. He has brimstone cannons and a pause button for the fucking sun. We've got inclusive greetings and a holiday neutral Starbucks cup. You should be inviting this competition. And at the very least, you should be winning it. Yeah, that's, that's the big one. All right, Eli, you're next. Colin asked for a roast of people who are Canadian and Trump supporters. What? <laughs> what? No. Oh, Canadian Trump supporters. Right up there with Brexit fans and fiddlers of the late Roman Empire. Yep. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry, Canadian Trump supporters. Is your nation not going to shit fast enough for you? You got a president blackface has you locked in a bubble like you read the first two chapters of World War Z. Your healthcare system's been handed over to the crack that Rob Ford smoked. And you want to support <laughs> Donald fucking Trump? Canadian Trump supporters, listen up. If you want to live in America, we will swap with you. Yeah, Just yeah. name the river. Yep. I'm, on I'm it. you. You're me. Yeah. Fucking A, man. I'll even buy you a hat. Oh, yeah. Hook it up. All right, Tom, you're going to close out this round. Ted wants you to roast people who are his sister's ex and are named Pat. I'm, so, I'm sorry. We just we only had nine that fit the theme that I was doing. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> Pat. All right. Well, for some reason, one of the things I was supposed to know about Pat Sandwiched among like many very bad things was the fact that he likes to skip work to go sailing. I'm not sure that why that's bad. Maybe he's bad at sailing. Okay. <laughs> it wasn't clear. Anyway, other than his insistence on a hard swing and his work life balance, Pat's just another one of those rich entitled fucks who, despite having everything handed to him, still has not spent one minute of his life of leisure to get past the massive crushing insecurity and pettiness that motivates every moment of his fucking life. So he's cruel by instinct and by default because he's afraid that if he doesn't show off, he'll be shown up. And he will, Ted, because it never lasts with guys like Pat. Because sooner or later, someone comes around with money, power, and no appetite for bullshit. And I fucking promise you, they will sink your battleship. <laughs> <laughs> well done, sir. That sound means it's time for another Spightning Round. 
The category is shitty friends, and I want you to break up with these friends in analogy format. So, like, your roasty is to friendship as blank is to blank. Heath, you're going to start it off. Rick needs to break up with his religious friend, Neil. <laughs> okay. So, we got a photo of Neil, and he, he's very clearly dressed up as a superhero with the power of toothpaste. <laughs> not sure what that means but that's what he looks like and that fits perfectly actually because neil is to friendship as toothpaste is to orange juice <laughs> that was, that was horrible very close oh. five out of five dentists say we hate you at least twice a day <laughs> <laughs> all right and cecil cullen needs you to break up with nick Okay, Nick is to friendship as a steel wool pad is to a hundred year old perfectly seasoned cast no. iron. Oh. I only say this <laughs> because you have an impenetrable red tuft of hair on your face. It looks like a tumbleweed rolled through an open crime scene. <laughs> <laughs> Noah, this one's for you. Veronica needs to break up with her friend Anton. Oh boy, doesn't she? Yeah. Anton is to friendship as that thing on his lip is to a mustache. <laughs> right? Like, I mean, you can tell that that's what he's going for, but it's just as obvious he's never going to get there. Seriously, dude, you make me wonder why face urchin isn't already a phrase. <laughs> right. Tom, this is a special request from Dennis to once again roast his friend Max. Break him up so you won't have to deal with Max a third time. All right, we'll try. Okay, let's see. Uh, Max is to friendship as... Chernobyl is to DNA. Not at all fucking helpful and of a hell of a lot more ugly than you'd expect. <laughs> and Eli, Travis needs you to break up with Jeremy for him. All right, got a slightly different twist on this one. I'm going to go with uh, Jeremy. Travis and you are like Sam Harris and the guests on his podcast. You seem racist and he probably shouldn't associate with you. <laughs> also, you took this picture in Hawaiian garb with this little girl. I assume she's your child, but you look like the white colonizer apologizing for just having killed Moana. <laughs> You're like, no, darling, you have to understand. We need this land, honey. <laughs> Why are you crying? <laughs> all right. All right. Great spiting, folks. All right. So that brings us to the final round. These people get extra credit for making requests that we especially enjoyed. And Heath, we're going to start with you. Stephanie wants a roast of swans. It's about fucking time. Thank you, Stephanie. Yeah. Fuck swans. Stupid birds. They can't even fly. They're just swans, stupid. Swans They're just like dumb fly. birds. They, they, they absolutely fly. fly. Yeah, they I, don't, fly. Flying. I don't think that. Usually. Agree to disagree. Regardless, <laughs> they look no. ridiculous. They're stupid fucking <laughs> neck face. They, they look like a silly putty with a bendy straw. Like a giant <laughs> version of that. They're like spy versus spy made a tea kettle. And that's like the shape of that's a bird shape. I feel like I should use them to hang a shower curtain for a giant. Right. Just like push them through <laughs> a little slip. That makes sense. All right, Cecil. Hannah wants a roast of Logan Paul. Logan Paul is a perfect example that if you're somewhat pretty and white, you can do horrible shit like exploit suicide and everyone will forget like Ronald Reagan at a press conference. And <laughs> really, his voice is like a chef's knife cutting on a granite countertop. He looks like someone blew half the seeds off a of dandelion. He's the color your eraser in grade school and he's still wildly popular. He's like a curse on all Americans because we built our houses on Native American burial grounds. Yes! <laughs> There's a ghost I could be scared of. <laughs> Noah, Terrence wants a roast of Mike Pence and mother. Oh, yeah. Well, hey, look, his side wanted him hanged, so I guess he's getting off light yeah, on right? side. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'm not going to make fun of his appearance because because that's been done to death. <laughs> to be clear, I'm saying been done to death is what he looks like. That is his <laughs> Instead, I'm going to make fun of the fucking mayonnaise sandwich that must have been the sex life between him and oh, mother God. back when they were young enough to feel oh, obligated no. to do that, right? <laughs> I will, like, I'll give you a million dollars if the words and thrust two, three, four were never uttered in that bedroom. <laughs> hey, Mike, look on the bright side. At least you never have to sleep in the wet spot if she makes you curl up on the foot of the bed. <laughs> <laughs> About face and then a money shot. Some fun stuff going on. There's never no, a didn't. money shot. This just a little dust. It's like a hole in the sheet. <laughs> the only money Mike Pence doesn't have. You know, like when you exhale when it's really cold outside, it'll be like yeah. that. You know the way uh, Tom breathes after one of his roasts? Like that. that <laughs> All right, so Eli, Amy would like you to roast her improv troupe called Side Hustle. Hi, Amy. I I'm sorry for the lateness of this roast. I mean, 
After all, at this point, this roast is two years old, and there's no way this team lasted two years. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I mean, I'm just impressed it lasted till the end of your email because this picture has we're just in this till the sexual tension between the guy dressed as a cowboy and the guy with the mutton chops breaks written <laughs> all over it. You're a Harold team. Really? A Harold team? You have an octogenarian on your team. Are you sure you don't mean you're a Harold and Maud team, Amy? <laughs> you're, like, you're more like a Harold and Maud team. All right, Ed, Tom, to close things out, we have a special podcaster request for you and Eli. Peter would like to hear you roasting Eli and Eli roasting you. All right. Uh, getting to know Eli is amazing because he does this thing, and I've watched it like 20 times, and it's fucking brilliant every time. No matter what the situation Eli will stand there like a fucking lightning rod, just happily, joyfully absorbing blame and insult for slights both real and imagined, rushing to defer and apologize, peacekeeping like he's carrying around a secret white helmet in his back pocket. <laughs> and it works. It works so well that even when you're mad at Eli, even when you feel personally aggrieved, you can't help but be won over by the way he disarms you. And as you stand there, disarmed you better be fucking sure you are 100 percent on his good side because he knows and you know that now your belly is fucking exposed <laughs> <laughs> terrifying all right i thought he was gonna be so much meaner to eli <laughs> i'm not gonna actually be mean to eli all right well now you know next time peter to ask that he's do it yeah. He he'll do he'll be or Cecil he does he does or it for me free just, yeah, right. you don't have to actually you don't have to pay. <laughs> must be getting secret other, yeah. requests all right uh, Tom poisoned his wife this okay, is the I'll only allow. safe place to tell you Haley he's no, been poisoning you this whole no. time he told me about it don't eat the soup he brings like, like, no, nope, nope that's no. a felony accusation not a roast. what did we say yeah, different thing all right fine fine roast 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 okay yep Tom is like if we trap the mind and heart of a poet. Inside a French bulldog. <laughs> Those are a little. Oh, Tom should gosh. have been born 200 years ago or 500 years ago. He should have won the heart of a princess with a sonnet. But instead, <laughs> he's stuck here. And now, where TikTok is the dominant art form and 40% of the country won't take the vaccination. And he has to spend one-fifth of his podcasting time with me. Oh. And honestly, what's a better roast for him than that? There you go. <laughs> TikTok is not art. It's not art. All right. Well, guys, we're not at the end, but we can see the end from here. So be sure to stay tuned both here and over on Cognitive Dissonance. And remember, if you haven't heard your roast by now, it's way more likely you missed the episode where we did it than that we haven't done it yet. Just, I'm just yeah, going to no toss kidding. that out there. Nearly <laughs> done. <laughs> anyway, Tom, Cecil, thanks as always, guys. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. Before we retreat back behind the curtain tonight, I wanted to let you know that if you're a patron, you'll want to free up some time on the evening of Saturday, August 7th. We're going to be live streaming our annual company-wide pajama party. Heath, Eli, Lucinda, Anna, Andrew, Morgan, Tim, myself, the whole team is going to be there in person. We're going to be playing games, answering questions, doing amazing physical stunts. Patrons for all the Puzzle No Thunderstorm shows are going to be invited, so it's not too late to sign up. Oh, and if you can't make it the night of, don't worry. It'll be available on video later. Anyway, that's all the blast maybe we've got for you tonight. We'll be back in 10,022 minutes with more. If you can't wait that long, be on the lookout for a brand new episode of our sister show, The Skeptocrat, debuting at 7 a.m. Eastern on Monday, and an even new episode of our sister show's Hot Friend God Awful Movies debuting at 7 noon Eastern on Tuesday and an even newer episode of our Half Sister Show Citation Needed debuting at noon Eastern on Wednesday. Obviously, this show wouldn't be heavy enough to stay on your phone if I neglected to thank Heath Enright for being and right as rain. I want to thank Eli Bosnick for being here in the Bosnick of time. I want to thank Lucinda Lusions for being Lucinda House. I also want to thank Dominic and Benny Two Cups for this week's Farnsworth quote. Incidentally, if you want to check out Dominic's podcast, you'll find the Burnt Church Atheist linked on the show notes. But most of all, of course, I want to thank this week's most mirthful earthlings, Lisa Bridget, Lady of the Farm, Jenny CS, Sci-Fi Sky Guy, Mads, Daniel, So Surly, Das Fergen, Dorsey, Rob, Robin, and Torian. Lisa, Bridget, Lady of the Farm, Jenny, and CS, who are so hot, so warn their kids not to touch them. Sci-Fi Sky Guy, Mads, Daniel, and So Surly, who are IQs are measured in astronomical units. And Das Fergen, Dorsey, Rob, Robin, and Torian, who are so bright I had to put on sunglasses to read their names. Together, these 14 forthright fornicators forwent a forkful of their fortune this week to give us money. If you think you're up to the challenge of giving us money, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash scathing atheist, whereby you'll earn early access to an extended ad-free version of every episode, or you can make a one-time donation by clicking on the 
donate button on the right side of the homepage at scalingads.com. And if you'd like to help, but your money is deflating, you can also help a ton by leaving us a five-star review, telling a friend about the show, and following at PIATBot on Twitter. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robinson handles our social media, and our audio engineer is Morgan Clark, who also wrote all the music that was used in this episode, which was used with permission. If you have questions, comments, or death threats, you'll find all the contact info on the contact page at scalingads.com. Hey Morgan. Hey Morgan, it's Cecil's birthday. Wish wish Cecil a happy birthday. <laughs> wish him a happy birthday, Morgan. <laughs> happy birthday, Cecil. Wow, that's a spot on Morgan. I think I, I nailed that. Good. Yeah, yeah. Brutal. Nailed so mean, you guys. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Don't worry, I, he'll Morgan cut that last bit out. We don't. Yeah, want you to don't. Hear we it. don't it's want you to hear that. Yeah. It hurts you. It's super mean. <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.